hey, so I did a thing. I, I watched Batman vs. Superman Ultimate Edition because I was like, all right, well, we're getting the Snyder Cut. I should probably rewatch this movie. And if I'm going to rewatch it, I'm going to watch the director's cut to see hey, what else does it have going on. Yeah, I should have watched this a lot earlier because it's a lot better than the theatrical version. So hey, I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Maybe it's a review. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm probably still going to title it a review regardless. But this is essentially my thoughts. Just what my reviews are. So if you don't remember, when Batman vs. Superman came out, I was like, eh, this is pretty lackluster considering it's Batman vs. Superman. Then there was this Ultimate Edition that had a half an hour. It was half an hour longer. That makes the running time three hours. And I was like, I just don't want to sit through three hours of that movie. I was like, oh, okay, on. But yeah, after watching it, that's a pretty important half an hour of content. Damn it. Okay, so initially when I was watching Batman vs. Superman at the very beginning, you know, Lois is in the desert and... Just right off the bat, in the theatrical version, I'm sitting in the movie theater and I was like, this just feels choppy as hell. Yeah, because they just sliced up a bunch of stuff in that scene, which you see in the Ultimate Edition. I was always like, how how did they frame Superman? I mean, you get the, yeah, people died and then I guess they blamed it on Superman, but this one you shows them burning bodies in the Ultimate Edition. But they're still gonna have bullets in their heads, but... I imagine no one's gonna do an autopsy on that shit. I'm sure after the story, Lex Luthor just had the body shoveled away or something. I don't know. Point is, while I'm watching Ultimate Edition, I'm like, well, that scene was a lot better. Let's just see what else they got. And it does have more. I mean, most of that extra half an hour is in the first half of the movie in a lot of investigative angles. Everyone's investigating everyone, you know? It's like Clark Kent is investigating Batman, Lois Lane is investigating the whole scene at the beginning that frames Superman, which is in the theatrical version, but it's just a lot more fleshed out here. Actually, I said something in my review of Batman versus Superman and the pacing in this movie. This movie is two and a half hours long. Did it need to be? I guess to cram everything in this movie that they were cramming into this movie, yeah, it had to be two and a half hours long. However, there are enough elements like threads. You can just see them. You're like, that didn't need to be in there. They could have taken that out, could have taken that out. Ah, me, before... 2020 broke me. But that phrase is a double-edged sword. When there is a, a plot point or a series of plot points that just feel like half-ass plot points that are shoehorned into a movie, the natural course that I go to is like, yeah, you should probably take those out. But on the other side, what you could do is flesh them out and actually make them relevant. I didn't know it was filmed to be fleshed out and made relevant and then sliced up to make the movie shorter. And that's what they did. They actually fleshed out a lot of those investigative angles and side arcs and they're actually important. In looking into the Batman, Clark Kent actually goes to Gotham. And instead of the movie lightly implying or telling you that Clark Kent doesn't agree with Batman, it shows how he comes to the conclusion that this Batman is judge and jury. You know the mark all over guards don't care? That's the judge. He talks to residents who seem scared of Batman. I mean, what good is the Batman if he makes people afraid? It was an interesting arc, whereas in the theatrical version, it was like, Nobody cares about Clark Kent taking on the Batman. Okay, guess I'll stop. Good talk. So it does such a good job at illustrating that Clark Kent's like, this guy is dangerous. He's just a vigilante criminal that makes everyone feel afraid all the time. And that was just another scenario where I was like, the theatrical version kind of implied things, whereas the Ultimate Edition, you see it. It just did a better job at really showing how Batman's going crazy. Like someone who's a millionaire and dresses up like a bat to scour the rooftops and be a vigilante, already they're, they're kind of not stable. It just did a better job at showing after the events of Man of Steel, Batman is losing his mind. He's taking the tumble down to villainy to the point where he doesn't necessarily care about the people as much as he probably did at one point. Which means Alfred's words of warning felt more impactful, it just felt like Batman's soul was on the line. Which makes it more profound the fact that the one who saves his soul essentially, the one who helps Batman remember how to be a hero, is Superman, the alien he was hellbent on destroying earlier on in the movie. And I know this was all essentially in the theatrical cut. I'm just saying an extra half an hour of runtime fleshes it out as an extra half an hour of runtime probably should. It's amazing the difference that half an hour can make. Still not a fan of Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. In fact, there are a few things in the theatrical version. If they annoyed you there, they're gonna annoy you here. If you felt Doomsday was shoehorned into the end, you're gonna feel like that here. Martha. I'm still in here. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. If you weren't a fan before, you're probably not gonna be a fan now. And that's the case with me, though I will say on paper, he's Lex Luthor. If you think of his lines being said from a Lex Luthor, let's say the animated series Lex Luthor. Yep, Michael Ironside, Darkseid, animated series Lex Luthor. Point is, I was, I was a fan of the portrayal 
of the villains in that show, apparently. If you think of the lines Lex Luthor says in Batman versus Superman, you think of that Lex Luthor saying them. They are Lex Luthor lines. His motivation, very Lex Luthor. But that arch enemy mastermind Lex Luthor that's on paper in here just kind of gets lost behind Jesse Eisenberg's spastic betrayal of Lex Luthor. So yeah, in the end, finally watched the Batman vs. Superman Ultimate Edition, the director's cut essentially of Batman vs. Superman, the three hour cut, and the half an hour of extra footage. It, it went places. It was important stuff. It takes it from feeling like a sloppy mess to an interesting, dark Batman and Superman investigative story. Like you look at Terminator 2, the Terminator 2 director's cut is a half an hour longer than the theatrical cut, but it works. There were things taken out where it's like, yeah, you can take that out. You can do that differently. There's a scene in there that's completely different with the chip in Terminator's head. It's amazing. But the point is the theatrical cut is coherent and the director's cut just, it gives you more and fleshes it out. Same with Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings theatrical cuts, they work, they're amazing. The director's cut, the extended editions, they are better. But either work. Batman versus Superman is like, there's one version that works and that's the ultimate edition, the director's cut, and the theatrical cut just, there was no way to shave a half an hour off of that movie and make it coherent. So yeah, glad I watched it, finally. <laughs> Actually, I'm actually bummed out I didn't watch it earlier. Could have spent more time enjoying Batman versus Superman rather than being like, oh, you mean that sloppy mess I saw in the theater? Which I do want to clarify here, the Snyder Cut. I saw quite a few comments in my comment section like, well, what's Zack Snyder's Justice League director's cut gonna do differently? How is it gonna be different? It's not like this. It's not like the Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition, which is a director's cut of the theatrical cut. No, Zack Snyder filmed Justice League and then due to a family tragedy, stepped off of Justice League and instead of Warner Brothers being like, hey, we'll wait for you. You take your time. They were like, all right, we want to make our deadlines. We'll bring in Joss Whedon, who refilmed a lot of the movie and essentially made his own movie. So the Snyder Cut isn't a director's cut of the Justice League movie we got. The Snyder Cut's a different Justice League movie. Yeah, there's going to be some overlap because some of Snyder's stuff was used in the Justice League movie, but also there's going to be a lot of stuff in the Justice League movie we got that's not going to be in the Snyder Cut. Snyder Cut going to have a lot more. The context to scenes that there might be overlap with is going to be different. Different thing altogether. So if you hated Batman versus Superman, maybe it won't don't sway you. But if you were just kind of in the middle, like, eh, it's okay, it's disappointing. I say give the Ultimate Edition a shot. I walked away from the movie feeling like I had seen, if not a different movie, a much better movie. All right, so Batman versus Superman, the Ultimate Edition. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Did it make the movie better? Did you feel like it's the same movie, but just longer? Whatever you thought about it, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.